Good afternoon, everybody in Facebook land. It is your host here, Jared McCreevy, for my Facebook Live interview with Michael Phillips. He works for McCluskey Motors out in Colorado Springs. they got two locations, Truck Town and one with Imports. Uh, he's going to be joining me. It looks like he just jumped on right now. Uh, inviting him in to do uh, the questionnaire like I have everybody else over the past couple of days and uh, looking forward to get to know him on a little bit more of a personal level. I apologize that I'm in a t-shirt. I just got done uh, sweeping up my mother's driveway with my nephew and that was, uh, I don't know, I think I might have burnt my head a little bit. I freshly shaved it this morning so <sighs> feeling a little loopy today but uh, waiting for Mike to comment. As soon as he comments, I can go ahead and invite him in. We can get the interview started and uh, hopefully get to know quite a bit more about Mr. Phillips and uh, who he is, what he aspires to be and his successes. I know uh, I've gotten to know him a little bit over the past several weeks and I'm looking forward to uh, learning quite a bit more. Jake is on a boat like a boss. Kind of like that, that song, Lonely Island. Have you heard that before, Jake? I'm on a boat. If you haven't, I'm going to have to send it to you because it's a, it's a pretty good song to listen to, especially if you're on a boat, right? Hopefully everybody's having a great day. I know today is the first day in a week that we've actually had some really good weather where I'm at in Maine. Uh, I know uh, some of the people down in Virginia were having some overcast, cloudy weather, but today's been a beautiful day, thank God. And, uh, you know, got a chance to enjoy it a little bit with my nephew hanging out with my mother and uh, her boyfriend. So uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a good day. Mike is on. I think he's watching right now. I'm just waiting for him to comment so that I can get him invited in and then we can get everything started. Hold on one second. Mike, I see you live. There you go, brother. And I'm inviting you in. Mike. All right, says it's inviting. He's connected. There we go, Mr. Phillips. How are you doing, sir? I, what's that? I said, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing good. I, it took me a minute to realize if I had my mic plugged in that I wouldn't be able to hear what you're saying to me. So therein lies my problem. I'm like, hey, I'll do a sound check and make sure that I can hear it okay. And so I did that, and then I realized, well, I can't hear anything from my phone. So here I am. Uh, <laughs> I'm still technically. <laughs> Technologically challenged somewhat, right? It's it's quite all right, man. It's quite all right. I appreciate you taking the time. I'm sure you probably had a lot going on today uh, with the family. So I appreciate you taking the time to uh, jump on and do this interview today and allow myself and anybody else that watched uh, a chance to kind of get to know you on a little bit more of a personal level and know who you are, right? Absolutely. And I, I appreciate you doing this. I think it's something that's absolutely awesome. I'll, I'll warn you in advance. I have three kids and I've got a great Dane. And I have a beautiful wife so that if they cruise through, because as soon as like my daughter's five, as soon as she thought that I was going live on Facebook, she came in here to give me a big hug just to see if I was on the camera yet. So she may wander through. So uh, if she does, you know, it, that, that's that's what it's all about anyway. So Right. And that's quite all right, man. It's, uh, I mean, I think the first interview I did, my cat, my sister's cat jumped up on the table right in front of the camera. So it was like, okay, yeah, fantastic, right? Fantastic. So uh, Perfect, it's right? I'm going to make a cameo appearance. So. Um, we'll get right into it. Just like uh, if you've seen the other interviews, I know you said that you didn't really watch them because you didn't want to have your answers kind of tainted a little bit, you know, or, or, you know, pushed one way or the other by anybody else's answers. Um, I asked right. five questions and I may ask a couple ad lib ones depending on how you respond. But the questions are, who are you? What do you aspire to be? What's your greatest success? Do you have any regrets? And then lastly is what advice will you give to future generations? So we'll get it started right away. And this can be as in depth as you want it to be, or it can be as short as you want it to be. It's totally up to you, Mike. Who is Mike Phillips? So I'll, I'll answer this. Here's the political answer, right? I'll answer that in just a moment. But <laughs> uh, one of the things, and I, I want to address what you said, I deliberately, and I think what you're doing is absolutely awesome. I deliberately, did not watch the other video. I'm going to go back and watch them because you've interviewed some really awesome individuals. And I caught a little bit of, of Bobby's yesterday just yep. because at that point I started to feel intimidated. I was like, man, he's got this lineup. I better watch and get some sort of idea of what he's going to ask, right? Is it like the family feud? What's what's going to happen, right? Right. And, but I, I haven't wanted to watch uh, them all the way through yet. I am going to go back through and watch them because I really do think it's awesome. Um, but I, I didn't want to be steered or shifted, uh, like you said. So 
Uh, the first question you said is, who is Mike Phillips? Yes, sir. So let me give you uh, th this one. And, and I did think about this one because you told me a little bit of this yesterday. So I, um, th here's a little bit of history. And for, for me, uh, who, who I am now is, I, or who I want to be, I guess, is I want to be a, a really awesome uh, husband, a really awesome father, a, an awesome business person, um, somebody that's, you know, I want to feel success and feel well respected and such. And uh, who, who am I though is a lot of that comes from where I, where I came from. So I'll give you a little bit of history. I started for me, when I started my career in business, I was a radio guy. Yep. And uh, so I, I worked at a roller skating rink for uh, almost 12 years and you get, yeah. Hey, it, it, let me tell you, that is a fun gig, man. And there is uh, going through it. I worked at this roller skating rink here for, for like I said, almost 12 years. And you get this uh, false sense of what reality is. Because for there, I was like, I think I was 16 years old and I got promoted to be a DJ right at the roller rink. 16-year-old yep. DJ. And let me tell you, I wear some white jeans better than anybody else. Okay. <laughs> just, just picture that for a minute. Right. Well, and, and so you get, you know, <laughs> what are you going to say? Think of, I don't know if you've, if you've ever watched Jimmy Fallon where he does, he has a skit that he does with like Will Ferrell and Jennifer uh, Lopez, where they talk about my tight pants. pants. Dude, that's all I can Oh, do. My tight pants. <laughs> oh, it, it, seriously. I, fortunately, fortunately for probably everybody, I don't think I have any pictures of that time in my life. <laughs> but you do get a, 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 an unrealistic sense. You know, when I was in my teenage years and trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, it's like, okay, well, I think I'm going to go, I'm the next Casey Kasem, right? right. I'm going to go be this killer radio DJ. Why? Because I can entertain five, six, seven hundred people in front of a live audience. So clearly, I, I'm going to be this, this big, bad uh, radio dude. And that was what I wanted to do. That was what I started going to college for, was I was a broadcasting major in in college and then uh got out of that got out of the roller skating business through some turn of events and some circumstances and uh fell into the auto industry you know i, I realized for me you know like like many of us you know if, if automotive sales people are are watching this like many of us i fell into the auto industry believe it or not there are not a lot of people out there that say you know when i grow up i want to be a used car salesman <laughs> right that right. that's not the that's not the top of the list. When I was a kid, I wanted to be, uh, I, I, my first passion was I wanted to be a veterinarian because I liked animals. And then I realized, well, uh, that kind of sucks because you have to put animals to sleep and I'm out on that program. So then I didn't know what the heck I wanted to do. Then I was going to be a radio guy. I ended up getting into the used car business almost 14 years ago now. And, um, you know, love it. So, so you're saying who is Mike Phillips? I'm, like I said, first and foremost, I I'm think, I think most days I'm, I'm a good husband. Right. Uh, I want to be a good dad, a good business person. I want to be somebody that, that motivates other people. And there's, I mean, there's a whole bunch of pieces that, that make that up. I still, to this day, I'm, uh, I'm 41 years old. And it's like now I still, to, for me, something that's special. My wife and I, from time to time, will get out and still go to the roller skating rink because it's just, it's fun, man. For me, you have to have the fun in your life. If you don't have fun, it's, it, you know, it doesn't, doesn't make it, it, all the rest of the stuff that we do isn't worth it without enjoying yourself, without having a fun time. Yeah. And there, there's not a, an awesome word for it. It's just fun. Have fun. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so I, that's, I, and that's one of the things that, that, you know, over the past 10 years, you know, I, I've tried doing, but my focus, you know, and I'm fixing it now, right is over the past 10 years since I've had my first child and now I've had three total is my focus was on the old school mindset that I'm the guy that has to go to work all day, every day and provide, you know, and put, you know, put the food on the table and the roof over their head. And it, it drained me. Right. And, I, and you're still in the dealership working. And for me, it, it was just so much of my time was spent at the dealership trying to prove my worth and provide for my family that, it missed out on a lot of the fun. So that's one of the things that I'm trying to fix now. So I agree with 100%. You got to have the fun or else it's kind of all for naught, right? I mean, what's the point of doing it if you're not doing it when you're doing it, right? 
Well, absolutely. And for me, I love the dealership world that I'm in. I'm extremely fortunate that the owner that, that I work for, the dealer principal that I work for, uh, Joe and Ann McCloskey are the, are the owners of our, our dealership. And they're absolutely phenomenal people. I would tell anybody and everybody, yes, come and work for them because they're, they are very supportive of family. They're very supportive of fun. You know, like I said before, I have three kids and uh, when when things come up, whether it be sporting events or things at school and so forth, they're adamant that, and it, not just with me, I've been with the in, in the dealership with them now for almost 14 years. I haven't gone dealership to dealership or whatnot. I've been at the same place and they are adamant with all of our employees. We have a little over 80 employees now that when somebody has something goes that, that's going on, it's family first. We we would rather, and I think that's really cool because that's something that I value that, and, and I tell my employees this, it's like, we would rather have you go, look, go catch your, your child's play, right? I know you, you have kids as well. Go, go catch the, go catch the play, go catch the soccer game or whatnot. You're then come back to work and give it a hundred percent. You know, your spouse, your wife or your husband or whoever it is that's working there will be more thankful that you made that soccer game. Okay. Yeah. You can, dinner will be in the microwave. It's cool. Right. <laughs> but, but go invest in the family. Your kids will remember that you were there for that stuff. And to, to me, that is so valuable um, to have somebody in business that's supportive of not, not just me, but our whole company like that, that it's, from what I'm told, it's a rare find. <laughs> That's, it, it, you know, and I've, and I've done that bouncing around and, and it's not to take away from the, some of the people that I've worked for, you know, cause I've worked for mm -hmm. some really awesome dealer principals, owners and managers, you know, but it, some of the, some of the cultures may not necessarily be as supportive, right. Where they, they are sure. more of the old school mindset that, you know, you're, you're on the B schedule, right. Be here when we open, be here when we close. And, uh, you know, that's, sure. that's the part that was taxing for me. And I've, I've been through, God, I want to say probably six or seven dealerships, eight dealerships now, actually, that I've worked for. And it just, none of them were really of that mindset that, hey, you know what, you got family, go and take the time, enjoy it, you know, and just come back and make sure all your stuff is straight. So that's, that's awesome that you sure. found that. It is, it is really a rare find to, in the auto industry, to have that. So. Um, sure. Let's let's skip right into the next question. With that, what do you, with everything that you just said, Mike? What do you aspire to be? Because I know you're you're running the internet department now for McCloskey, right? I am the yeah. Officially, my title is digital marketing and business development executive. I've been I started in sales with McCloskey. I've been through uh, was an internet uh, salesperson. I was an internet director. I've uh, been a finance manager, been a, a floor or sales manager. We call them sales drivers because the job on the floor is to drive sales. Right. Store manager, uh, GSM. I've worked just about every facet uh, within the dealership, in the dealership. And so now I am focused, even centrally, I was the G as the GSM, I was centrally located in our BDC center. So you could catch the pulse of the dealership. And uh, what I aspire to be, I don't have a really good answer to this question. I, you know, for me, I, I really do enjoy what I do. I enjoy what I do at the dealership. I enjoy giving back to other people. I mean, I've done some other podcasts and some other video. Uh, I haven't done the, the Facebook Live thing until recently. But I want to be somebody that makes an impact and gives back. What do I aspire to be? At some point, and I've told my wife this for years, all right, I want to figure out how for me to provide for my family and everything else. We all want to, I think everybody in the car business has aspirations that you go, okay, how am I going to make my millions, <laughs> right? right? What's my million dollar, what's the million dollar idea? And uh, I, you know, one of the things that would be really fun and that this is not meant to be pompous or arrogant by any means, but I want to be the Mike Phillips, you know, yeah, you know, you, the, some people, they know they've made it when you're the Jared McGreevy, right? right? So it, it's one of those that it's like, hey, I, that that I do want to be uh, known as an expert in the field of of sales and BDC. Uh, I think it, I think it's foolish to have somebody say that. Well, I, I don't want to do that, or it's a self titled expertise and so forth. The reason I enjoy what I do right now still is I'm in the thick of it. I'm able to, you know, the people that work alongside me that work work for me, but I work alongside them. 
we do this. I, I mean, I've, I've talked with you how many times on through Facebook Messenger or through Tacoby. It's like there, there are some people that, that can teach it and say, well, yeah, I did that some years ago. We're doing it right now. And to me, that's the exciting part. So you're saying, well, what do I aspire to be? I want to aspire to be better today than I was yesterday. I want to have a better Sunday this week than I did Sunday last week. You know, there's that constant. It's um, This is one of the things that we used to have a, a Suzuki franchise years ago with McCloskey's. And one of the things, it's the Japanese Kaizen, right? Yeah. Constant and never-ending improvement. So for me, what, what do I aspire to be? I want to be better today than I was before. And I want my kids to see that. I want my wife to see that. I want my wife to be rocking and rolling alongside of me. And uh, I, I, there's not, there's not a, a finite like, well, I want to be, you know, I want to make X dollars and I want to run this business. I mean, I, for me, if it presented the opportunity to – for itself that I could run 10 businesses, 20 businesses, 30 businesses. I think, you, you know, do I have the, the mental uh, capacity? Maybe. Do I have the desire? Sure. You know, let's see what it presents itself. And that's, you, you keep going. So it's like, what do I aspire to be? Is that, that's a hard question. Cause I'm still finding to, to be quite frank, I'm finding that every day. Do I have goals? Yeah. I have daily goal. I, I, you know, like, this Facebook live challenge deal, when we started all this, you know, several of us, I would yep. say together, you no, know, you were the, the catalyst for this in my, from what I saw. But um, the, when, when you started that deal and we, we all got into it for me, it started out as okay. Challenge accepted. I'm right. in. Right. But then it really quickly evolved into, okay, well, let me write down some definitive goals. What do I want to accomplish for each day? What do I want to accomplish in the 30 days? What do I want to accomplish? So I, I am a planner, you know? Um, so it's not that I don't have goals, but it's, it, you know, live right now in the present, have the fun, do, you know, uh, hit, hit now hard. That's what I want to do. Right. So, and we, we connected, uh, me and you connected right when I put that challenge out, you know, a little over a month mm -hmm. ago, it was about a month and a half ago now, um, that I put that challenge out. And mm -hmm. I, I quit the challenge because, you know, as you know, Jason uh, challenged me a while back just to start doing live videos. And it started with, do a live video of a cat. And I didn't have a cat, you know, that I could do a live video on at the time. So I did a, I, I did a, a, a video on a doorstop, which was a brick inside a, a stuffed cat like a fake you know knitted cat and you know from mm -hmm. there i need to step outside my comfort zone and see how much i can grow this and how much i can learn from it and that's why i was like you know what i'm gonna do a challenge to put out there for anybody else that wants to jump in you know and then jason challenged you to it and uh yeah. to tag him and me and then me and you connected and then i watched you and you can see over the 30 days of your videos that you definitely got more comfortable and confident in doing it and definitely a lot more planned out and you had more fun with it than I did because you had the whole green screen behind you on some of them and, and all that stuff. Like you did, you did some pretty cool stuff with it. And, uh, you know, that was the whole purpose. Step outside the comfort zone and, and see, you know, what you're truly capable of. My question to you on that kind of an ad lib question is have sure. you positive changes for you since then? Have you made any new connections outside of myself? Have you, you know, reached out to people that, you know, they're doing the challenge as well that maybe I don't know about. Cause I've seen other people doing the challenge that I didn't know that we're doing it. I only caught whim, you know, of them doing a live video and saying that they're part of the challenge. Like, Whoa, when did you start doing this? I didn't even know that you were on it. Right. Yeah. Well, so the, the, the uh, uh, like a, uh, are are there other are there other people that are are doing it and so forth? Yeah, it, interestingly, so I started um, and once I started doing it. Your your first question was, have I connected with other people? Yeah, significantly. I mean, I think you and I were connected on Facebook for for some time. Uh, I don't know, a year or two, probably before, like in passing. You know, we're in the car business. The car. Right. I've said it before on my videos. Car business is only ten people deep. Really, right. you can meet anybody else in the car business. It's 10 people deep. But when you and I really started to connect was then, and it was like, hey, I've, I've said to my wife several times, I was like, 
what you're doing, who you are from what, at least the persona behind the live video. And I think you get a much deeper sense of who somebody is. Uh, I was like, yeah, he's a, this guy is a great guy. Like I would, I would hang out with you on the weekend. You could come to my house on Sundays, but you're light years away from here on Sunday, away. but that's, you know, that yeah, a few, few, few miles out of the way. So have I connected with other people? Yeah, absolutely. Some people that you never thought you would connect with. You know, you watch these live videos and some of the people that commented on them, it's like the automotive Hollywood, right? right. And you go, holy crap, I've heard about that person. Hey, they're watching my video. My, you know, go back to a previous statement that you made. You said your first live video was the cat. My first live live video, I tried to get YouTube live to work like a year or two ago and it never worked. And I was yeah. just trying to do it to show my 10 year old son up. Right. Because he's like, like, I, if you watch my live video with him, the kid's like a YouTube juggernaut. He, he came downstairs and high five me today because his channel was finally approved for monetization because he's under 18. And so he's like, Dad, I got my first job, right? He's a YouTube <laughs> personality. And, and so my first video, because it was outside of my comfort zone, was between, I, I tried doing uh, the Instagram to Facebook thing or whatnot. And it was like a Sunday afternoon, me, me grilling, and it was like 17 seconds long. And I'm like, all right, well, that was dumb. And then 20 minutes later, it's like, your video got 50 views. And I'm like, 50 people tuned into Colorado Springs to watch me throw raw meat on the grill. You have got to be kidding me right now, right? There's something behind this. Right. So, uh, it, you, you know, I, yeah, I've connected with, with all kinds of people that I, it, it's, it's like video pen pals. Uh, it, you know, uh, in our age demographic, you remember what a pen pal is, right? You're writing to some dude you've never, you're never going to meet in France, right? In this case, you feel like you actually meet them across this teleprompter. And so it's, that's been a really cool deal. And, and yeah, there, I have gone out of my way to challenge other people that have then picked it up. Half, half of my BDC, half of my call center is doing it. Nice. And one of the guys, one of the guys you, you talk to regularly, Anthony, who, who works with me in the BDC center, he did a whole live video. I, I haven't seen him log on yet. But he did a whole live video series on him changing this headlamp on his Jeep, right? It's like a 99 Jeep. And he goes, Mike, he goes, you wouldn't believe it. He goes, I had like 100 people watch this video of me cursing at my Jeep and taping this damn headlight on. <laughs> and, and so what's cool about it is you see that you, you start to see who the person is outside of work, you know, because we all connect with each other every day at work. But then you start to see who they really are. And then on top of that, for me, the people that I've seen, Jamie Schroeder just logged in here, and you start to see their confidence level. And Jamie works for me. He does he does some social media work for me, and he does my YouTube and great, just fantastic guy. But I challenged him. I said, okay, you got to get on and do this YouTube challenge, and you can see it pull him way out of his comfort zone. I think he's either and Jamie, you got to forgive me because I see you're on here now. He's either 20 or 21 years old, but he's a young guy, right. and he he can type it in the comments if I've got it wrong. But he he's a young guy. And um, it's the same deal. Like you see his confidence level go up. His wife is coming in to the, the call center. She's high-fiving him. She's talking to everybody. She's like, oh, that's the coolest thing you guys have going. So it's this, this blossoming positive energy that uh, as silly as it, we go, oh, how do we all connect through Facebook? But it is, yeah, he's 20. There you go. I, I knew I would get one of them right. So, so uh it, it, Yes, have I connected with other people? The short answer is yes. What else have I seen come from it? I, I got some of my um, my mental mojo back, you know, because like I said, for me, who I am at my core, I'm I'm a radio guy. I'm a talker. I have no shortage of words, if you can't right. tell that, right? I'm very comfortable speaking and participating with other people, not to hear myself speak, but because I want to offer something. And so that's one of those things that it, it allowed me to kind of refine my re, rejuvenate, I guess, myself that it's like, OK, I, I can get on and do this. And if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it full force and try and offer something. And if people don't like it, the cool thing is they just go, boom, shut it off and and move on. It doesn't hurt anybody's feelings. It doesn't cost anybody anything other than a little bit of time. Right. So. And, I, and I know at 530 at night, I, I, when I started doing this, I chose 530 because I wanted to be one late enough in the day for most people, right? Where they're probably getting out of work or they're at a time where they have a free moment where they can jump in. And Not do car it. people. And, and I know for you, it's, it's, you're two hours behind, so it's 3.30, you know, and then California, three yeah. hours. 
online, you know, so during the week, that's why I'm willing to do it seven days a week, right? That's why I've done this so far. I started Monday was my first full one. And today, you know, today marks seven days total of doing it. And I wanted to offer it every single day because not everybody's going to have, you know, Monday through Friday, you know, or a late Saturday or late Sunday available. They're going to have to do it on a different day. So it's like, you know, I'm going to open it up to the whole time and say, when works best for you? And I got to tell you, I've, I've gotten to know quite a few people so far, just the ones that I've interviewed you know, over this past yeah. week, Ashley Mayberry is the one that I've gotten to know the most because even though me and her have been connected for a bit because I'm connected with Bobby Heron and with Patrick Butler and Jennifer Briggs and, and Matt Keenig and, and all those people, you know, I never really talked to her much, right? So her coming on and sure. doing the video, I actually got to know quite a bit about her and it was great, right? Whereas some other people, I knew some some about them, right? But then I get to learn a little bit more of their personal side. So it's, it's – I'm happy that I did this, happy that I'm doing this and, and, and growing it. And it's, it's been a great experience so far. So hopefully, uh, hopefully if you keep doing it, keep doing it live, you're going to see some more benefits coming out of it, you know, and I'm hoping everybody does. Right. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. And I, for me, I already know that I'll continue doing it. I don't know about every day because our, it, you know, in the car business, you're like, Oh, five thirty, people are getting off work. If car people are watching going, people get off work. <laughs> right? What are you talking about? Right? So, so um, I definitely for me, I'm, I'm going to continue doing it because it's it is a lot of fun. It's opened up some other avenues, uh, some other idea channels in my head for me. So, right, let's, uh, let's jump right into the next question. Um, and that's going to be what is your greatest success? My greatest success uh personally professionally um Either this, this is a, you know this is a hard one my my greatest success I, can i can i share something can i get off topic for a second here sure is that appropriate rather than just coming right out and answering the that's question fine. that's fine so for me one of the things that i got taught i went and saw tony robbins i'm a huge fan i went and saw him speak in like 2000 six, I think it was. And one of the things that I learned there, I wish this was my own idea or my own thought, but it, it's a, it's one that uh, I really took to heart was he said, you got to start viewing or stop viewing things as successes and failures, mm -hmm. because you have to, you have to start viewing things as outcomes. You're always going to have an outcome. You know, you chase the goal, whether you hit the goal or not, you will always produce an outcome. And so when, when you're saying, okay, well, what's your greatest success? And, and I had a really hard time with that. I'm, I'm a, if you've ever studied personalities, I'm a type three. So I'm, it's defined as the motivator, right? Right. So for me, that the success, the view of success, that's the driving force. The failure, it like breaks me in half, right? So when I started looking at that differently, it was like, well, wait a minute, I can have a whole series of outcomes, a whole series of successes. This kind of kicks ass, right? And I, I remember, right, it, it, what I needed to learn that at the time that I learned that. And because I had started at the dealership, and this was like early 2004, and I had a F&I manager. I was the green pea. I came in and I was starting to post stuff online, right? I, I was posting stuff online before online was like an in thing. You know, to, you think about it, even 10, 12, 15 years ago, uh, online for automotive was really in its infancy. Right. And I remember I was posting stuff online and I got into it with this F&I manager. And uh, he looked me right in the eye and he says, you know what? He says, the problem is you will never be successful. And he was ticked off because I did something online that he and he was the online guru at the time right that he did not recommend and we started seeing some success from it and such and he says well you're never going to be successful with that and i remember looking at him and i remember saying you know what and I, literally so i i almost had a really short-lived career because i said screw you you're not going to tell me what my definition of success is right and I was like, I might have just gotten fired, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And then I walked out, and I remember saying to myself, holy cow, what is my def? What is my def? I, like, I just challenged this guy, like, there is no way. I know exactly I'm going to be successful. I'm going to be this hitter. I'm going to light the world on fire one day. And then I, when I walked out, I'm like, I, 
how, how do I know that, right? What's the, what's the outcome? And so then, you know, within about a year of that was when I heard the statement about successes and failures and outcomes. And, and I said, it, it kind of tied it all together for me because then I was able to look at it and say, okay, well, so what, what's my biggest success for, for me personally? One of my positive traits, I think, is my, my work ethic and perseverance. What's my biggest success that I look at in life? It, to me, that's easy. So far, they're still up and coming. But my kids are, uh, to me, I've got one that's almost made it through high school, <laughs> right? <laughs> he's on his way. He's watching right now. Colin's, Colin's maybe he's still watching, right? He probably tuned in. He's like, oh, that's my dad talking again. Um, but he, he's about made it. He'll be, he'll be a junior this next year. But he's doing it. He's a fantastic athlete. He's a good student. Uh, he's, his character is just, that's one of those that it's like, okay, that's a success. My 10 year old, same deal. Nice. The quality of his character, his athleticism, him going through gymnastics, that's a success. My, my daughter, I got to mention these. So this is a long winded answer, but Hey man, you asked the question, right? Okay. My daughter, I, I'm telling you look for us in 2028. My daughter's going to the Olympics. She is an elite gymnast. She's five years old. And that is for me, that's one of the goals, right? I'm, I'm, t I'm saying it right now on the live video, archive this video. That's the, that's the chase, right? For, for, uh, at least as parents, right? <laughs> That's my success for her at the moment. And you know how that is. Right. And so, you know, another, another, my, my biggest success is, uh, like I said, for me, I've got that personal success. I have my kids and certainly uh, I have my, my wife and my marriage. To me, that, that is a deal that takes a lot of work uh, to be successful at. And, no, yep. When I'm saying that, I, I, I got to be careful because I'm looking at myself on camera. They're like, oh, man, he's saying that really takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work from both of us. It takes more work from her probably than it takes from me for her to accept all the 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 uh, the pain in the butt that I am, the late night live videos, the work hours, the all the crazy right. gallivanting and, and running around and stuff. So so to me, that's a success also, you know, and and uh, so, so there's a bunch of you're saying, well, what's the. I don't know that I could, and I'm not avoiding the question. I just don't know that I could pinpoint it to one. Well, you know, hey, I remember the the atom collider running into each other, and wow, that was awesome, right? That's not. That's just not how my brain operates. So, okay. That, well, then let's, hopefully that answers let's the question. Let's, and that's that's part of the reason why I asked the questions is because I want to get everybody's different take on it, right? Because you know, and I, I talked about it with Bobby when I interviewed with her last night with collaborating is that we all view things different. You know, me and you may have the same mm -hmm. perspective, so to speak, right? I may be seeing things from the same angle as you, but I may still see it slightly different than you. And that's why I want to ask all these questions Absolutely. to everybody so I can get an idea of how people, you know, perceive whether it be success, what they aspire to be their goals, or whether it be regret, which is the next question, you know, because that kind of goes with success, you know, what's your greatest success? Well, what's, you know, do you have any regrets, right? So let's let's jump into that real quick. And, you know, I kind of want to hear your take on that when it comes to regrets and do you have any? Sure. I think anybody that tells you they don't have regrets is a flat out liar, man. <laughs> Everybody looks at it and says, gosh, if I could have done this just a little bit differently. If for nothing else is than when we were kids, you know, I could, I could look at it. Um, do, do I have any? The short answer is yes. Am I going to share them all on a, on a live video on Facebook? Probably not. But you don't have. <laughs> That's a, you, don't have. you know, um, do uh, the, the thing is, though, that the, the series of successes and failures and outcomes that I've had in my life and the decisions that I've made and even it, the, the regrets are a result of the decisions that I've made. Are they way terrible that I'd say, oh, my gosh, I got to do that way differently? No. Uh, I mean, because the, that whole culmination of, of pieces or what's made up who, who I am and where I'm at and you know, both in personally and business, financially, uh, all of those things that it's like, you know, you look at it, it here, here, I'll give you a simple one. And I'll share this one on live, right? I remember a buddy telling me about the Bitcoin thing, 
right? You remember? Yeah, I, you're you're an online guy. I know you've been online. You, I know that you know that. Oh, oh, Bitcoin is the next biggest thing. Yeah, I want. What's that? You cut out at the. Yeah, I. I really, yeah, so I, really I have a buddy that comes. Oh, dude. Yeah. Oh, dude, you got to get involved in Bitcoin. I'm like, this is the lamest shit ever. Are you kidding me right now? Right? I'm. Oh, I'm gonna play with digital dollars, right? And then I see the thing that says, oh, hey, if you'd invested two hundred dollars in Bitcoin, you'd have seven point two million dollars right now. And I'm like, are you kidding me? He was, or whatever it, is, whatever the number is, seventy five. Seventy five million. Yeah, seventy five. If you bought dollars okay. ten Just years ago, rub it in. Yeah, I know. It, it, trust me, it's it's because when it came out, I saw it. And I was like, you know what? This is going to be like mm -hmm. a fad. Nobody's going to get into digital currency, right? It's it, it's it's not going to be a thing, right? Especially the way they were talking about how to get it. You have to mine for it in order to get it. Or back then, you can buy right. from it that's mined it. And I'm like, it's not going to be worth anything ever, right? So I didn't buy anything. And then now, 10 years later, I read an article that says that it could be worth $75 million had I bought $100 of it 10 years ago. It's like, right. really? So, so. The answer to that question, do, do I have any regrets? Sure. Some of it, most of it is little stuff. The, the serious uh, character shaping, life changing, those moments, um, are there regrets? You know, there's times that you may look at them and say, well, you know, maybe if I had done this differently or that differently, but that doesn't bring me to where I am right now. Right. So do you choose to change it? You know, I mean, would you, th there's a lot of things you could say, well, yeah, oh gosh, I would have spent the 200 bucks on Bitcoin 10 years ago. Okay, but I didn't. So here's where I'm at, right? I'm, right. I'm still, because at that point, quite frankly, even if I had done that, and I've said this to everybody and they say, oh, BS, Mike, if I had done that, I would still be working, it was $75 million, I'd still be working in a dealership in a BDC. Why? Because I love it. I love the people. And even that at, at my core then it's like, well, that's still a way that I can, you know, pay it forward to somebody else to, to teach them and grow them and, and, and so forth, yep. you know, and, and they're like, oh yeah, we hope you'd still work in the BDC because then you could write us a big fat check. Right. <laughs> but that's, you know, I, I think anybody that says, oh no, I've got no regret. You want to live with your life with no regrets uh, to, to truly have zero, then they're not living, man. I agree. I agree. Let's go into, well, we're going to the last question and, and uh, mm -hmm. it can be as in depth as you want it to be or not. And again, it can be, you know, whether it be for our current generations or our future generations, the question is, is what advice would you give essentially to other people, you know, whether to be to live a happier life, to have a better quality life, whatever the case may be, what advice would you want to leave for our generations that are here or the next generations? I don't know if I should temper this response or not, because I think my knee jerk reaction, uh, what advice would I leave for future generations? Stop being assholes. <laughs> I, because it, the, the thing is you get back what you give, right? You reflect back to yourself. So uh, it, it's in, in psychology, you, they call it reflecting from, from somebody else. Yep. And it is amazing how self-absorbed and how, um, just people be, I, I know I probably shouldn't have said assholes, but I said assholes. And then I said assholes okay. a bunch more <laughs> Buttholes, jerks, right? Just be nice. And I know it's easier said than done, right? But it, it's like if you really take the time to put somebody else first, um, then they'll do the same for you, <laughs> right? That that would be one of the pinpoints is actually spend the time to to invest in someone and put somebody else first and find out what it is that's eaten at them right now, what it is that has, has got them uh, got them bothered right now, if, if they're having a tough time, you know? Right. If you do that, then then uh, I think for future generation, and, and especially like with the cell phone thing. I, by the way, Jason just popped in, and Jason, I watched most of your uh, keynote, which was really good, by the way. And I think it was interesting how he's talking about, he says, yeah, how many times, you know, he says, oh my gosh, it's so uncomfortable for me to be talking for this time and my phone's over there, right? I think people need to, one of the things that people, as society as a whole is missing, set the phone to, and I'm saying this from a live video from my phone right there, right? But set the phone down for goodness sake and go connect with people. Reconnect yep. with your family, reconnect with your neighbors, reconnect with your, your church, 
pray, reconnect with yourself, right? So I, I, that's that's it in a nutshell. Don't be an asshole and build relationships. Right, and that's one of the things when I sit down for dinner with, with my kids is no iPad at the table, no no tablet, no phones, nothing at the table. Turn them off. If it's that important, you can get it after dinner, right? It, it, it's, yep. Nothing's that important to take away from us sitting together. Even if we don't talk, let's just sit and enjoy a meal as a family, right? And We do the same. That's that's one of the things that I'm, I'm dead set on. I put my phone away. You know, if it rings, it rings. I don't care. I'll silent it and move on. And to me, that's very important. When you're sitting down at the table and you're eating with your family, that's that's the time to sit there and connect with your family. We can bread together. You know, that's that's one of the things. I, I definitely, I don't know if you've ever seen, um, you might have seen the videos that get shared on Facebook quite often. His name is Prince E, E-A, I think it is. And everybody calls it E. And he does all these videos talking about, you know, regret right how a study mm -hmm. was done with a bunch of old people what do you regret not taking chances yeah. right? and then he also did one about electronics and how we refuse to put the phones down and we're you know while we're trying to get connected socially with people through the internet through digital we're becoming disconnected with them face to face right and that's one of the videos that he does and it, it was i mean it hit home and it's like i'm gonna put my phone down but it's like I build my business. I do everything I do with my, my computer and my phone. So how can I put it down when everything is now in the digital age? I just have to learn to build relationships still without having my phone in my hand at all times. Like if I'm talking to somebody, my phone shouldn't be in my hand because to me that symbolizes to them that they're not really the most important person that I'm talking to. Right? Like if I was sitting here doing this live video with you and I had another phone and I'm sitting there like, hold on one, one second. You know, and I started yeah, texting. No I got to check mine too, right? <laughs> right. I'm checking my Twitter. I'm checking my email, right? You know, it, it's, it shows in my it, huge disrespect, in my opinion, you know, for you as an individual, if I'm doing that to you, saying like, thanks, Mike, for joining me. I appreciate it. But just one minute, there's something a little bit more important than you to me. It's on my phone. So let me go and look at it, right? So that's one of the things that I think, you know, going along with what you say is that we need to learn to put the electronics down stop walking with them in our hands, not looking where we're going and enjoying, you know, the scenery. Even if you live in a city or you live in a country and you're out and about, enjoy what's around you, not what's on your screen, right? Because you're going to miss Absolutely. it. So um, is there anything that you would like to leave, you know, at the end of this? I do have a quote that I want to say, but is there any, uh, any anything that you want to end with? A note, you know, for doing this video, for the challenge, anything like that? <laughs> I got nothing. The one time I'm speechless. I would tell you, anybody that's watching this video, if you're watching it all the way through to this point so far, I would tell you two two things. Get to like Jared said, get out of your comfort zone. Do the 30 day challenge. It's one of the hardest fun things that you can do. And and even my wife said today, she goes, I don't believe it's already been 30 days. And I'm like, well, I can keep going. She says, no, we're, you can take a break. It's cool, <laughs> right? Uh, she says, it's fine. Do one Wednesday. Cause I used to do uh, my, my radio show used to be Wednesdays and Sundays. And I don't know that I've got all this all over video all the time, but I'll do something on Wednesdays and Sundays is likely my plan. Uh, so if you've watched to this point and you haven't participated, participate in it. It's fun. It gets you out of your comfort zone. Find something that is important to you to talk about. And surprisingly, it'll be important to other people. Um, and just thank you for doing this. Seriously, yeah. I think I from from the bottom of my heart, thank you for doing it because I think it's the the video part of it's fun. Uh the the interview deal to really get to know other people all the way across the United States. Uh and and like I said, I watched un poquito or el poquito or whatever, I don't do Spanish of uh <laughs> of uh Bobby's interview yesterday and I I'd kind of caught Tidbit. Here, here's a funny story. I'll, I'll share this. And I don't know her personally. So, and I even had said this to my wife. I remember at one point, Bobby and I got connected on, on Facebook and I didn't know who Bobby Heron was. And uh, we got connected maybe, I don't know, I don't know, a year or two ago or whatnot and through the, through channels and so forth. And all of a sudden Bobby's name was coming up all over the place. And I'm going, man, 
I don't know who this, and I, I crossed my heart. Okay, don't repeat this. I said, because I, I don't even think, I was just networking. I was connecting with everybody that I could, right? Get it all right. I said, I don't know who this dude is, but he must be awesome, right? Bobby, right? For the, and so then I went and looked at it and I was like, oh my gosh. And I'm, I'm revealing that on the live video. So I was like, God, I feel like such a jerk, right? Because Bobby Heron I was so busy. What's that? If Bobby Heron comes and sees this, <laughs> she'll know. Well, that, and, and that's okay. Here's the, here's the thing though. At, at the time, because I was like, God, I felt like such a jerk because it was just like you said on the digital thing. I was so pent up and trying to just connect with everybody, everybody possible, just connect with them, right? Rather than really nurturing a relationship and finding out who the person was. And so I thought for me, I thought that was really cool. And that's why when, when I was watching her, I watched her speak uh, briefly at a conference online. And then I watched you interview her yesterday and I was like, holy crap, how am I going to follow that? Like that, that's, she's unbelievable, right? Yeah. Just as, as a, as an individual. And so I, that, that's one of those that, you know, that that's that introspective. That it was like, holy cow, what am I doing? You're connecting with all these people. Just slow down and find out who the person is. That's another reason I think that is so cool with what you're doing is it allows people to really see. And yeah, if she sees that, I'll tell you now, sorry. <laughs> right, right. I mean that. I, and, and, and still she, she, she wouldn't know who I am from Adam, like personally, no idea, but it, even connecting with on online at that level, take the time to get to know the person a little bit about them. If you're going to, if you're going to invest in connecting with that individual, wh what are they about? Right. And that's, that's been a, I mean, the purpose for me starting this is, you know, and I was going to do this from my page, a place to remember dot life. But unfortunately, Mark Zuckerberg hasn't had a creative yet where I can do the live video from a page and invite somebody in. And I even tested it with Jake Davis, who jumped in a little while ago to watch for a bit. You know, we tried mm -hmm. it and we weren't able to do an invite, right? Like if, if I would have been doing this from my page, which was the purpose initially, and you commented, it wouldn't have allowed me to invite you in. I could pin your comment, I could delete your comment, or I could block you. Right. That was it. I didn't have an invite to broadcast. And I'm like, that's why that's like the purpose of this is to do it from my page and not from my personal profile, you know, and I right. wanted to do this to build a kind of a I'm, I'm lost on the word, like a database, so to speak, for sure. people to talk about who they are. Right. And have it digitalized so that anybody can go back and see it at any point in time and, you know, share if they want to and show people who they are what they aspire to be and what their success, what their regrets are and any advice that they'd want to leave. And I'm using it as a way to kind of collect some data as well in terms of how do people view their lives, other people's lives and the world, right? And what can we use with this information to try to bring each other closer together and be better as a country, as a culture, as a world, whatever the case may be, right? And, and the a place to remember about life, the purpose of that and I don't know if I've talked about it with you or not, is I want to allow people an opportunity to record a personalized message, God forbid, the day that the Lord calls them home and they're gone, mm -hmm. that, that message can be delivered to that special loved one, right? So if something were to happen right. to me, I would want a video to my kids, you know, saying, hey, I'm always going to be here. I'm always looking down. I'm always with you. You know, I'm so proud of you. Keep pushing forward and keep being great, Right. And, and right. I started with my mother's health wasn't the greatest, right? She was having issues with her knee. She had to have her knee replaced twice. Uh, the first time went bad. It was actually like half an inch longer than the other leg because of it. And it caused severe pain. So she had to go in and they literally, after a year, had to literally break her knee apart, pull it out and put a new one in and fix it. And she just kind of deteriorated a little bit. And she's doing good now, but I was afraid, sure. right? So I told her, I said, mom, right. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to record a video for me because God forbid the day that, that you pass, I'm going to be a wreck. Right. And I need to have something from you essentially saying, Jared, it's okay. Right. I'm, I'm with the Lord now. I'm fine. I'm no longer in pain. You can do this. You're strong. And it was like six months later, I'd heard a song from Lucas Graham called I'm not, or you're not there talking about his dad. And it hit me in the face like a brick, right? Like, wow, I need to do this for everybody, right? This needs to be something that everybody has access to, you know, because to me, I've heard people talk about having messages on their phone from their loved ones that are gone, right? That oh, yeah. they back, right? Or, you know, they don't have really a video of somebody saying, hey, Mike, you know, it was great connecting.
we've got to figure out how to get those recordings off my phone because I saved all those messages. You know, so I think there's so much, you know, we still have our, our dating messages, which will never probably be played for anything. They're, they're like PG, right? There's <laughs> nothing bad, but, but it's one of those that's so, um, and, and I've got them somewhere on a little digital recorder, you know? So I, I think you, you just nailed it on that because you, you can hold on to the, the piece of that person or who the person was or, um, and, and it just gives you that, because my, I mean, for example, I have stuff of my dad around the house here because my dad passed in 2012. And so it's one of those, it gives you the chance just to still hold a little bit on to, uh, I, I think you nailed it, that they're like, hey, it'll be okay, I'm still there, I'm, I'm there, you know, I'm, it'll all work out. So right. um, I, I think it's just, it's class act. It's It's awesome what you're doing. I appreciate that. And, and, and with that, I know we've, we've gone a little bit longer than, you know, with you than I have with anybody else. Um, you know, we had some great conversations. So I, I appreciate everything that you've provided for information inside about who you are, Mike, and, uh, you know, getting to know your perspective. I'm a huge Tony Robbins fan as well. So I appreciate that, you know, that tidbit of, sure. of saying, you know, stop looking at life as failures and successes, right? And just look at them as outcomes. Um, I want to end on a quote that I've been doing the past couple of days. And the quote that I pulled up tonight is, happiness is not the absence of problems. It's the ability to deal with them, right? And to me, that's a lot of people that I know personally that I've grown up with are going through some tough times, and they're looking at life, and they're not very happy, right? And, and I've been working with them and providing some advice and whatnot, trying to help them get through because I like helping everybody that I can. So I think that's something that would speak to them. You know, happiness is not the absence of problems. Right, because everybody has problems, no matter what. Whether you're poor or Absolutely. you're a billionaire, you still have problems. It's the ability, you know, the, the mental capacity, uh, the mental ability to be able to deal with them and kind of break them down into small portions and kind of tackle them one piece at a time. So, um, what what is your take on that quote? I I agree with it. <laughs> I mean, it's happiness. Yeah, absolutely. What do you? It it is uh, the one thing. Well, we have total control over more than one thing, but one thing that we have total control over is certainly our actions and our reactions yep. uh, to how we approach something. So I think, you know, how you're going to look at whatever drives your happiness or whatever's going to get you through that problem or, or opportunity or however it is that, you know, lots of people say, well, we don't have problems. We have opportunities bullshit we have problems too right <laughs> what is what's your what is your reaction to right. the problem how are you going to approach and handle the problem because that is going to help you to control what the outcome is and then how are you going to look at that outcome definitely definitely all right mike it's uh we've been on for about an hour brother i'm going to leave it at that oh, i appreciate yeah. you taking the time to uh jump in and do this interview with me and allow people to get to know you on a personal level and uh you know, We'll, we'll look forward to staying connected in, uh, you know, maybe one of these Absolutely. times and, uh, on a Sunday and we can hang out, maybe uh, watch a game, drink a beer or something, throw a steak on the Absolutely. grill. Absolutely. Either, either you out here or me out there, or who knows, we'll run into each other in Vegas at some point, I imagine, before too long, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. All right, brother. I appreciate you taking the time. Have a great night. Enjoy the day with the family. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, okay? Absolutely. All right. Thank you. All right, everybody, thank you so much for jumping in and joining me on my Facebook Live interview with none other than Mike Phillips, right, working for McCloskey Motors out in Colorado Springs, uh, the digital uh, marketer, BDC executive, right? And tomorrow at 5.30 p.m., I'm interviewing none other than Frank Lopes, right? A lot of people know who Frank Lopes is. He jumped in on one of my Facebook Lives during my challenge, and we went on for almost an hour and got almost 300 comments on it. And it was crazy, crazy, uh, raw, genuine content that we put out. And it was it was insane, and I loved it. So tomorrow night, Frank Lowe's, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I know it's Memorial Day, but tune in to watch me and Frank talk, me interview him, ask him some questions, and getting to know him on a personal level. Outside of the intense knowledge that he has of the automotive industry, we're going to get to know Frank on a personal level. Thank you guys so much. Have a great night, and we'll see you all then.